as a specialist, what is it uh, that you actually do? I actually go out into the community focusing on minority communities and faith-based communities, talking about the importance of organ, eye, and tissue donation. It's um, very important that we help people understand the process and equip people with the um, the correct information, not the myths, but the, the facts about donation. What do you feel is the reason behind this uh, disparity in our community? Why do you think uh, African Americans don't donate um, as frequently as maybe in other cultures? There is a lot of medical mistrust in our community and um, and especially here in Baltimore, in addition to some historic mistrust with the Tuskegee um, project is um, here, we have um, the Henrietta Lack story that um, came out several years ago. Some people knew about it from years ago. Some people just learning about it. So there's that mistrust in the, in the medical community that um, my life isn't gonna be saved if I'm signed up as an organ donor. Um, I'm not going to be taken care of that well if I'm an organ donor. So those are some of the things we face when talking to people about donation in the process. Okay, so what's the first thing that happens? What does a person um, need to do when it, you know, if they want to be a participant? We encourage people to um, talk to your family about organ donation. You can go to the MBA to sign up. You can sign up on the website. But in the community, a lot of times we hear people that um, say they just aren't comfortable with the donation process. So we share that process with them a little bit, the behind the scenes part of donation. They that living legacy is not the person at the hospital taking care of you, that there's the doctors there and it's their primary role to take care of you and save your life. And then once they do that, then they will um, call living legacy to say, hey, we have a potential donor here. And that's when we step in, but we're not there um, working on you. It's a separate organization. A lot of times once people understand that it's a separate organization that comes in and especially for the donation part, a lot of times they will sign up or sometimes they just want inf additional information um, before making that decision. The Donor Service Center is the hub of everything that goes on in the organization. We're involved in almost every single piece. We're like the heart of the organization. Um, so at any given time, you can be working on one case for the day or for part of the day, or you can be working up to four or five cases. It just depends on the timing, um, what the cases are, whether it's a local donor, whether it's an um, import case coming in, whether it's a tissue case that you're following to uh, potentially see if the family is interested in donation. Once a patient has passed or is on a ventilator, we get that call from the hospitals and basically we evaluate uh, to see if they would be suitable for organ and tissue donation. At any time, we can get a case where we need to activate our entire team to fly from point A to point B and that involves arranging jets for transportation or helicopters, coordinating with the transplant centers and the tissue typing labs as well as the hospital coordinator and pathologists and getting everyone on the same page so that everybody's where they have to be when it comes time to activate them for their part of the donation process. We would then work with our organ recovery coordinators to uh, facilitate donor management to assess the initial suitability, um, if the patient would be a potential organ donation, if they're designated, um, and then if they are, then we would walk them through the process um, as far as working with the family services team. It's fast-paced, it's never the same thing the same day, every day. You're always doing something different, you're always learning different things. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of uh, ability to multitask. Um, since we are the center of the organization, we're constantly juggling um, a bunch of different tasks from all different areas. I feel the most rewarding part of our job is that knowing at the end of every shift that we've really contributed to making a difference in someone's life. 
I get to go home every day and know that I made a difference in the lives of someone else. Um, it's great to be able to work with a group of individuals who will go above and beyond to make a difference in the lives of our donor families and the patients that we work with. Um, and every time someone gets transplanted, I think the whole donor services center just kind of celebrates with them. How long? Um, I know they said if you have like a heart, it has to be transplanted oh. within a number of hours or, you know, certain, maybe other parts of the body uh, can be refrigerated or frozen. What's, what's that uh, process like? Well, for the for the organs, the kidney can, kidneys can stay out outside the body the longest. The heart and lung may be the most crucial part, so they cannot stay out the body that long before they can be transplanted. So I think the, I think the time frame for maybe a heart and lung may be four to seven hours, and a kidney can go within 24 to 48 hours before it can be transplanted into someone. And um, on the back end, as the um, as the organ recovery coordinators at the hospital assessing the patient, they are, you know, drawing lab work and test the run on the donor. At the same time, our 24-hour call center is matching that particular donor to people that are on the waiting list to see who matches that person, contacting their surgeons to say, hey, we have a potential um, kidney for your loved one, or I mean, for your patient, or we have a potential heart for your patient. And um, that goes on to all the organs are placed. And there are six major organs that, that can be placed. You can save up to eight lives. Just one person like myself can do. I hope you enjoyed the show. Our next show has us in the kitchen with Sweet Pea Southern Kitchen Restaurant, located in the Federal Hill area of downtown Baltimore, and soon to be in our world famous Lexington Market, serving some down home comfort food for your soul. Chef and owner Fatima Ames named the restaurant after her late mother. So look out for the next show. Now here are a few things that I need you to do. One, I need you to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Number two, check out our network channel, the Kelly Hill Ross Network, where we are streaming the best of Baltimore. And three, scroll down to the bottom of that page to Kelly's News Reaction Team and record your opinion about what do you think about AI intelligence. So until the next time, hold on to what you got until you can get what you want. See ya.